Every day, the world consumes roughly 1,000 tons of Nutella. That's like four times the weight of the Statue of Liberty every single day. And the company behind Nutella buys roughly one third of all the hazelnuts on the planet. A huge chunk of which goes into making this. Millions of people all over Europe and increasingly the world grow up eating, or should I say, worshipping Nutella. <laughs> and I gotta admit, Nutella tastes mm, kinda good or kind of addictive at least. I sure used to love this as a kid, but I've kind of always refused to believe that this is the best version of a chocolate and hazelnut spread. And since I definitely enjoy a good food challenge today, we're gonna make actually great Nutella from scratch. Which believe it or not is actually kind of easy. It only takes like 15 minutes. And if the recipe is all you care about, fair enough. There's gonna be a timestamp link below, but I think by now we've all figured out that on this channel, you come for the recipe, but you stay for the story. Follow me. Okay, hello, 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 okay. All right, okay, I think we're looking good. Um, I'll explain this whole thing in a second. So the story of what we have come to call Nutella these days actually starts in the early 19th century with a historical figure we normally don't really associate with chocolate spread, and that is Napoleon Bonaparte, the famous French statesman. <laughs> Uh, Napoleon had some kind of beef with the British and decided to get into a trade war. Now back then, a big part of Italy was actually part of the French Empire. And so the trade war became a problem for the northern Italian city of Turin in a very specific way. Turin has actually always been known for its iconic cafes. The city was full of them, so you can bet your ass on it, their dessert and pastry game was fire. And one thing in particular was all the rage back then, and that was chocolate. I guess some things never change. And even though Turin was home to some of the world's very best chocolatiers, there was only one problem. Because what do you need to make chocolate? Right, cocoa. And who controlled most of the cocoa trade back then? Oh damn. So with cocoa becoming a very hot and very pricey item, the chocolatiers had to get creative. Different attempts were made to mix other things with chocolate to extend it, but out of all the ideas, mixing chocolate with hazelnuts was the one that spread like wildfire. And that was actually genius. Turin just so happens to be located in the Piedmont region of Italy, which to this day famously grows some of the best hazelnuts in the world. So chefs in Turin basically had the really high-end stuff right in their backyards. They called their newly born chocolate and hazelnut paste Gianduia, named after a character in Commedia dell'arte that was from the region, but the real hype was about something else back then. In fact, the most trending item those days was not Gianduia, but Giantotti, little solid hazelnut chocolates resembling the shape of Gianduia's hat. If you traveled to Turin now, you would most likely still be able to get some delicious Giandotti in some of the city's historic cafes. However, there's a little bit of good news because there's one old school brand that you might actually be able to find in specialty shops around the world if you're lucky. So, right over there is what I believe to be Berlin's like best chocolate shop. And I wanna see if we're fortunate enough to find some real Gianduia or Giandotti. You know, the real deal, the original that inspired Nutella. Let's see if we get lucky. Okay, that was a huge success and almost too easy because not only do I have the real deal Giandotti right here in this bag, no, I also found the real Gianduia paste made by the same company and I would not even have expected that. So, since it's like 30 plus degrees outside, before the stuff melts, let's quickly head back to the studio and see how good the original Nutella actually is. And so we have arrived at my favorite part of the video, which is of course tasting chocolate. So I have a few different Giandotti here, but I think most of them are the same milk chocolate and hazelnut flavor. There's only the silver one, which is fondente, which is like dark chocolate. So these are the two varieties that seem to be the most popular ones. I'm just gonna go ahead and try one. Let's see what the 150 year old hype is all about. Whoa, that's intense. Oh. 
Mm. <laughs> this is too much for me. Mm. I get it. I need like a second to breathe here. That is one intense chocolate. Okay, it's extremely smooth, full of cacao flavor without a lot of the bitterness, which I think is a pretty remarkable achievement. It tastes more like chocolate than like hazelnut, but it also doesn't taste like chocolate without hazelnut, if you know what I mean. So, you know, it was not a huge leap to get to this Janduya paste, which I'm gonna try now. I mean, it smells pretty much exactly like Nutella. <laughs> Mmm, ho oh, oh. what's happening? Mm. I have no words. You know, once again, this is kind of close to Nutella, but also so much better. The first thing I noticed, this is super hazelnutty. Like the hazelnuts are front and center, much more than in the candy. Texturally, it's not as melty as Nutella. Nutella, you know, especially in your mouth, it just gets really soft and extremely sticky. But the Janduya paste somehow has a silkier texture. It feels less nasty in your mouth. And I'm pretty sure that's not some kind of like placebo thing in my head. I definitely think the texture here is far superior to Nutella. Mmm, this actually tastes like really delicious hazelnuts. Let me just try those back to back. I kind of want the comparison. Oh, oh, holy crap. Mm. This just tastes absurdly sweet. And it's like so packed with this like cheap sort of fake vanilla flavor, if you know what I mean. I mean, there's no discussion even like this is just far superior. But in the end, all this goes to show is I think that my intuition was definitely correct. Chocolate hazelnut spread can be so much more than Nutella. And so the question that remains is, how do we get from this to this? And to get the answer to that, we need to understand Ferrero, the company behind Nutella. This chapter of chocolatey history begins in post-war Italy, specifically in a town called Albar near Turin, where a chef named Pietro Ferrero opens a little pastry shop. The country is recovering from the war, but things like cocoa are definitely still a luxury item. And what does a pastry chef from Piemont do when cocoa gets scarce? Ferrero comes up with little Janduya inspired chocolate hazelnut bars, which once again become an overnight success. But this time, there's actually a savvy businessman behind them. Pietro notices that people, and especially kids, love to spread his melted hazelnut chocolates on top of bread. So he comes up with a new product catering to just that craving. And no, it was not Nutella, or at least it wasn't called Nutella back then. Instead, they named it Super Crema Gianduja, and people fell in love with it instantly. Unfortunately, Pietro didn't live long enough to see it grow into the global phenomenon it is today. He passed away in the 1950s and eventually his son Michele Ferrero would take over the family business. One of Michele's early big decisions was changing the name of Super Crema Gianduja, which they actually had to do because of some kind of new law in Italy. But anyway, Michele Ferrero was like, guys, I think we need to go big. We need to give it a name that works internationally. It shall henceforth be known as Nutella. And the rest is history. Ferrero first expands to Germany, then into the rest of Europe and eventually the world, turning one product after the other into like generation defining bestsellers. And when Michele Ferrero eventually passed away in 2015, he was the richest man in Italy. But look, while without a doubt he was a legendary figure in the food industry, I'm not actually sure about the quality of Nutella. The main ingredients these days are sugar and palm oil. Palm oil being the cheapest food safe fat there is. Then further down the line we get 13% of hazelnuts, 8% of milk and then cocoa powder. <laughs> I mean, compare this to Janduya, which uses 40% hazelnuts and no palm oil, but instead cocoa butter. And look, with so much Nutella being made, you can imagine there's a fair amount of criticism surrounding the product. Let's just say the times when Ferrero would use locally grown delicious Piedmont hazelnuts are definitely a thing of the past. These days they're getting most of their hazelnuts from Turkey, which is by far the world's biggest hazelnut producer. Like 70% of the world's hazelnuts are from there. 
there. And let me just say that Ferrero's reputation in the regions that grow hazelnuts over there is pretty horrible. The company seems to allow some very, very questionable business and environmental practices to thrive over there, sometimes, you know, driving local farmers and workers into misery. I even stumbled upon accusations of child labor during my research more than once. But on the bright side, I actually think there is a little bit of reason for hope that Ferrero might try to address these things in the future. The company used to be under very sharp criticism for using palm oil, like a lot of palm oil in their products, especially Nutella. And palm oil is often linked to things like deforestation and some other nasty issues. But today, Ferrero actually claims to be using 100% sustainably sourced palm oil and apparently even got a thumbs up from Greenpeace for, for, you know, making the switch. But what I think is definitely undisputed today is that corporate Ferrero and Nutella are galaxies away from their humble beginnings in that little pastry shop in Piedmont. Not only in spirit, but I'm pretty sure also in flavor. And that brings me to homemade Nutella. As I said at the top of the video, it's actually surprisingly easy to make from scratch, as long as you have a food processor. And the process begins with, you guessed it, hazelnuts. Most recipes I found start with toasting unpeeled hazelnuts and then painstakingly removing the skins which contain too much bitterness. I was definitely ready to go through that process, but wherever I looked, all I could find were pre-toasted and pre-peeled hazelnuts. But since that is what we need anyway, I just went with those and I suggest you do too. You're gonna save yourself a lot of trouble. Add those to a food processor and blend away. At first, you'll just be grinding them finer and finer, but stay patient. As you keep processing them, the nuts will begin to release their oils and slowly turn into a paste. Actually pretty similar to like natural peanut butter. And so to this hazelnut butter, we'll be adding powdered sugar, Dutch processed cocoa powder, a bit of coconut oil, vanilla extract, and of course salt to bring out all the flavors. Mix everything together and you'll get a very thick paste. I really want to call this Nutella miso. But obviously that's not it yet. To give it this smooth and chocolatey texture, we'll actually take a little shortcut and add chocolate. But not just any chocolate, no, melted chocolate, especially if you don't have an industry-grade food processor. I set up a double boiler and simply dropped some milk chocolate in there. You could actually use any chocolate you like, but I would recommend a very milky one. Pour that into the processor and incorporate very thoroughly. You'll get a much softer paste, which is actually ready to eat. That's pretty much Nutella, except it's still a bit grainy. A trick I learned from Stella Parks is to simply add water. The Nutella is first gonna seize up a bit and become thicker, which is because the paste is all sorts of emulsified and the molecules go crazy once you add water. But as you carefully add more, just like tahini sauce, it will slowly get more liquid and very, very smooth. Just make sure not to over-process it because it will separate back at some point. Instead, just transfer to a jar and keep in a cool place. This type of homemade Nutella actually keeps really well in the fridge. It doesn't firm up too much and also you should keep it there because it's only gonna last like two weeks because it's homemade. But also, it's not gonna last two weeks because you're gonna eat it. But now, without further ado, I mean, I'm not gonna lie, it looks a little bit different. You can definitely see like particles of hazelnut in there. That's because we're not using industrial equipment, but the smell is like ridiculous. It's so good. Whoa. <laughs> oh, the reason I'm so overwhelmed by this and all the other chocolates that I just tasted is actually because I'm not much of a sweet snacker. I'm more of a salty snacker and sweet things tend to overwhelm me. <laughs> but this is delicious. Mm. 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 It's very hazelnut forward. It's like you get a punch in the face from the hazelnuts first, but then the chocolate comes back and comforts you. Very delicious, a lot more chocolatey than the other two spreads I've tasted actually. And one thing that really makes a noticeable difference in this one is the coconut oil that I used. Mm. I think I might have used unrefined coconut oil because you definitely get some coconut taste from this, but it's not bad. It's not bad at all. It's actually pretty delicious. And I think while I would reduce the amount of coconut in here, I think I would still add a little bit. One thing I gotta admit is that the texture here is, I think, the biggest difference. Mm, the homemade paste is 
just a little bit grainy so you can really feel like small particles of hazelnut on your tongue in your mouth but Again, I actually think that's a feature and not a bug. This is good. I don't know why, maybe again, it's wishful thinking or something, but it's not an industrially made product. This is homemade and I think you can taste it. You can taste the love that I have for you. Mm -hmm. Spoon drop. Okay, especially since it's so easy, this is 100% worth making at home. It's already pretty damn good, but I definitely already have quite a few ideas on how we could improve this. And there's something I've been keeping from you. So this is half a kilo of real Piedmont hazelnuts. Some of the best in the world. These cost half a fortune. I also have a lot of interesting things like cocoa butter and vanilla beans in the fridge right now. So I guess you might have an idea where this is going. I'm gonna attempt to make not just good, but actually gourmet Nutella in the next video. So if you have any ideas or experience or advice on how I can make it rich, smooth and luxurious, please leave a comment and I'm gonna see you in the next video.